Right now, there's a microscopic parasite called Toxoplasma gondii rewiring the brains of infected mice, making them sexually attracted to cat urine. When the cat devours the fearless mouse, the parasite completes its mission, which is reproducing inside cats. Meanwhile, in tropical forests, fungal spores are hijacking ant brains, forcing them to climb to the perfect height before exploding their heads to rain down infectious particles on the colony below. This is a 3.5 billion year war between the smallest and largest life forms on Earth. And after watching empires rise and fall, surviving asteroid impacts and ice ages, the small guys are winning. But these parasites weren't always this powerful. In fact, their rise didn't even begin with destruction. It began with a quiet betrayal, one that's still happening inside your body right now. In every one of your cells, there are tiny structures called mitochondria. If you've ever taken a biology class, you've probably heard them described as the powerhouse of the cell. That's true. They give cells the energy they need to stay alive. But mitochondria weren't always a part of us. They were once free living bacteria. And around two billion years ago, they pulled off one of the greatest survival tricks in Earth's history. One of these bacteria slipped inside a larger cell. Instead of attacking and destroying, it stayed within, peacefully. This process is called endosymbiosis, living inside together. The host cell provided food and safety, and in return, the bacteria pumped out energy just enough to keep their new home alive. Over time, both sides became so dependent on each other they couldn't survive apart. Eventually, the invading bacteria gave up parts of their own DNA and became fully embedded in the host cell's system. But once parasites learned how to live inside other cells, they realized they could do much more, or much worse, per se. By 515 million years ago, parasites had already built weapons so advanced that they could control the host without even being noticed. In the fossil layers from Cambrian oceans, researchers found shells that looked damaged in strange ways. Tiny tube-like marks lined the edges. They were signs of parasitic worms that had attached themselves near the mouths of early sea creatures. These worms developed long feeding tubes that allowed them to suck food straight from the host's mouth, while keeping the host alive and functional. The parasite didn't try to kill its host. Instead, it stayed attached and quietly took a share of every meal. The host kept feeding and living as usual, not realizing something nearby was stealing from it each time. This was one of the first signs of long-term exploitation in nature. And as time passed, parasites began working on a deeper level, even inside the host's biology. One of the best examples is Trypanosoma brucei, a parasite that still infects people today in parts of Africa. Normally, our immune system would detect an infiltrator and try to fight it, but this parasite has a clever little trick. It would switch its surface proteins, which are the markers the immune system uses to identify threats. Every time the host's immune system thought it had identified the invader, the parasite revealed an entirely new identity. With over a thousand different disguises in its genetic arsenal, this microscopic shapeshifter could stay hidden for years. While some parasites were changing their appearance, Others took things even further. A virus finds a living cell, attaches to it, and injects its own genetic code. That code then takes over the cell's machinery and forces it to build more viruses. One becomes ten, ten become thousands. In a short time, the host cell is completely taken over and eventually breaks apart, releasing the next wave of infection. They carried only a tiny strand of code, just enough to take over a living cell and turn it into a virus-making machine. They can now hide from immune systems, change their identities, and hijack living cells like machines. And when disaster came to wipe everything out, they evolved even faster. Earth has seen five major mass extinctions, events where most living species were wiped out in a short period of time. The worst of these events was the Permian extinction, which was a volcanic eruption about 252 million years ago. It erased nearly everything, over 80% of marine life and around 70% of animals on land. Forests destroyed, coral reefs vanished, entire food chains broke apart. For large animals and complex ecosystems, these were global catastrophes. For parasites, it was something else entirely. They survived and even evolved. You'd think that they would die because, after all, if the host dies, a parasite should go with it. But parasites had already evolved one of the most effective tools for survival. Speed. 
While large animals take years, sometimes decades, to reproduce and adapt, parasites do it in hours. A single bacterium can multiply into millions within a day. Viruses evolve even faster, mutating every time they copy themselves inside a host. This genetic speed gives parasites an incredible advantage. They don't need a specific host forever either. When one species disappears, they find another, like in the case of the mass extinction that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Giant reptiles vanished from the earth, but their parasites didn't, because they simply switched hosts. They jumped to birds and small mammals that survived in that extinction. Some parasites played an even longer strategy, like tongue worms. These are strange microscopic creatures that live inside the breathing systems of animals like reptiles and birds. Fossils show they've been around for millions of years. They survived multiple mass extinctions by becoming genetic hitchhikers, jumping between host species like passengers changing trains. While 75% of species died, parasites evolved faster than extinction could kill them. Mass extinction ended life for millions of species, but for parasites, it cleared the board. And with a fresh start, they began building something even more terrifying. As life slowly returned after each extinction, animals began to grow larger, smarter, and more complex. But while they were learning to survive again, parasites were already several moves ahead. One of the most shocking was mind control. A single-celled parasite called Toxoplasma gondii learned how to hijack behavior from the inside. It infects rodents like mice and rats, but instead of just making them sick, it changes how they think. Infected rodents lose their natural fear of cats. In fact, they start to feel drawn to the smell of cat urine, a scent they would normally avoid at all costs. The mouse then walks straight into danger, where it's quickly eaten, but for Toxoplasma, that's the mission. This parasite can only grow and reproduce inside a cat, so when it infects a mouse, it changes the mouse's brain, making it walk straight toward the cat like it's delivering itself. This kind of behavior has been shaped over millions of years to push the host toward one clear goal. While some parasites learned how to control their host's mind, others developed complex ways to spread, moving between different animals and environments. A good example is the malaria parasite. It operates across two species, humans and mosquitoes, and runs different life cycles inside each one. Inside a mosquito, it reproduces sexually, growing and developing in the insect's gut. But once passed to a human through a bite, it begins multiplying rapidly, invading blood cells and spreading through the body in waves. This complex life is strategic dominance, allowing one microscopic enemy to exploit multiple ecosystems simultaneously. Beyond mind control and spreading through complex species, a few parasites focused on creating biological bunkers. One of the most extreme examples is the bacterial endospore. Certain bacteria evolved the ability to create a hardened shell that allows them to shut down and survive under extreme conditions like heat, radiation, chemicals, and even the vacuum of space. The anthrax bacterium, for example, makes spores that are so strong they can stay in soil for over 100 years. When conditions are right, they wake up and start infecting again, like they were never gone. Parasites were now controlling minds, hopping across species, and surviving nuclear-level threats. But little did they know, they were about to get a new advantage, handed to them by us humans. For billions of years, parasites evolved in the shadows, slowly, patiently adapting to every change nature threw with them. Then humans arrived, and the pace of evolution was never the same again. It became faster. Around 10,000 years ago, our ancestors started farming. They built the first villages, kept animals close, and began living in tight, crowded spaces. Parasites no longer had to wait for slow changes in nature. Humans gave them something quicker. Crowded spaces, dirty conditions, and close contact with many new people and animals. This was the start of something dangerous. Diseases that once lived in animals jumped to people with ease. Measles came from cattle. Smallpox likely started with rodents or camels. Influenza passed through ducks and pigs. Once inside people, they had endless opportunities to spread, and the more we tried to stop them, the stronger they became. In the 20th century, we discovered antibiotics, and for a moment, it felt like we'd won. Infections that once killed millions could now be treated with a single pill, but in the background, bacteria were changing and adapting faster than ever. 
Some developed enzymes that broke down penicillin. Others, like tuberculosis, became resistant to multiple drugs at once, and in just a few decades, our miracle cures started to lose their power. Today, antimicrobial resistance kills more than a million people every year. That number is expected to hit 10 million by 2050. Changes that once took hundreds of years can now happen inside one person. HIV can become resistant to medicine during treatment. The flu changes so fast that we need a new vaccine every year. And on top of that, climate change is bringing back even older threats. As the Arctic melts, ancient microbes that were frozen for thousands of years are coming back to life. In 2016, a buried reindeer carcass thawed in Siberia and caused an anthrax outbreak infecting dozens of people and eating away the life of an innocent 12-year-old boy. We gave them crowded cities, global travel, medicine to outsmart and even ancient bioweapons trapped in ice, now melting into the soil. We were building the perfect world for parasites to take over. And sooner or later, something was bound to break. When COVID-19 spread across the world in early 2020, many saw it as a once-in-a-generation disaster. But in reality, it was a clear sign of what modern parasites can do in the world we've built. SARS-CoV-2 moved through cities, countries, and continents within weeks. Entire economies shut down, health systems were imbalanced, and as vaccines rolled out, the virus kept changing. New variants like Delta and Omicron appeared one after another. Each version had slightly different traits, making it harder and harder to stop. This was antigenic variation, which is a survival tactic that parasites like Trypanosoma brucei have used for millions of years. Now, it was happening in real time. But SARS-CoV-2 wasn't the only threat, and it wasn't even the fastest. Other parasites have taken advantage of modern life even more aggressively. Carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteria CA are bacteria that don't respond to even our strongest antibiotics. They're almost impossible to treat. Another example is drug-resistant tuberculosis. It keeps spreading even when people take medicine, like tiny infections that won't die. The pace of evolution has folded many times. And we are the reason why. Global air travel means a disease found in one village today can appear in a major city tomorrow. Crowded cities, poor sanitation, and overused antibiotics give microbes more opportunities to spread and evolve. And while we scramble to catch up, they've already moved on to the next phase, the one we didn't see coming. For most of human history, we've seen parasites as background players, harmful, annoying, sometimes deadly, but never in control. That view is starting to change. Ecologists now know that parasites aren't just a side effect of nature, they're a core part of how it works. In study after study, researchers have found parasites linked to nearly every part of the food chain. One major review showed that parasites are connected to over 75% of all food web interactions. That's more than any other group of organisms, more than predators, prey, or plants. Parasites help shape population sizes by keeping stronger species in check. They quietly control how fast animals grow, when they reproduce, and in some cases, how long they live. If one species grows too dominant, a parasite outbreak can bring balance back without any claws, teeth, or loud battles. In many ecosystems, parasites are the unseen regulators. They move through birds, insects, fish, and mammals, connecting species that wouldn't normally interact. And when they disappear through chemicals, human interference, or mass extinction, the system begins to fall apart. Some species boom uncontrollably, others vanish, food webs start to collapse within years. Even major evolutionary traits like sexual reproduction, immune responses, and genetic diversity have been shaped by parasites. They apply pressure on every level, from DNA to behavior. And now, we might be starting to hand them the future. For the first time, we're starting to work with the very organisms we've spent centuries trying to destroy. Scientists use viral vectors to deliver gene therapies. We're reprogramming bacteria to produce life-saving medicines. We're turning our old enemies into allies only because they've taught us that resistance is impossible. Over 3.5 billion years, parasites have survived asteroid impacts, ice ages, global extinctions, and every tool we've created to fight them. Every antibiotic, every vaccine, every attempt to shut them down has only led to new versions, smarter responses, and faster evolution. 
In the war that shaped every cell, every species, and every part of the food chain, the winners have already been chosen. And now, we're learning to survive on their terms. <laughs>